da, 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 he has no clue. Okay. Some random cute girl from another school brings some water with her number scrawled at the top and she sees he sees SJ sip it into the garbage when she thinks he's not looking. He has no clue how much time passes between them leaving the stage and hearing the the MC return to an announce the results. But the next thing he knows, Doc and the team are filling out to return their seats. None of it feels real. Without thinking too much about it, he drapes an armor on SJ's shoulders. She try she turns to wrap her arms around his torso, and when she buries his face in his neck, his ar other arm slips behind her waist. They breathe. The MC calls third place. It's not them. SJ inhales and just feels her ribs expand. When the MC calls the second place, it's not them. He says, S, I just want to say, shh, hush it. You can tell me later, bossy. She chuckles. It makes him feel better that he's than he's felt in a long time. And your state champions in the advanced pairs argumentative division from Brasselton Preparatory Academy, Justice McAllister and Sarah Jane Feedman. They don't let go. January 13th, Martin, I think I'm losing it. I've avoided writing to you about this because it really doesn't have any bearing on the Be Like Martin experiment. Then again, I guess it could because considering a failed attempt at a romantic integration or something. Anyway, after the dream I, I just had, which I definitely won't put in here because it's not appropriate, I gotta get some stuff off my chest. So SJ and I won our division of the state the state debate tournament. When we turned backstage after receiving our medals, everything felt different. I couldn't stop thinking about the way we were hugging just before they announced all the winners. And so, so when she turned to face me looking all beautiful, I knew that was it. No more resisting. <laughs> when standing there grinning at each other, so I looked at her lips and leaned in for the kill. And she turned away! Just straight up, 180 degrees, and started walking in the opposite direction. You see Doc anywhere? She said over her shoulder. That girl, I knew I was about to kiss her, Martin. She avoided me for the rest of the night, and then wouldn't talk to me on the ride back to school in her car Sunday morning. Just cranked up the music like I wasn't even there. Then, when we got to the dorms, I reached for the car handle, and she goes, So congrats on winning the tournament, like she didn't just read it, win it with me. Working with you has really been a real pleasure. I know you'll do great at Yale. See you around, Justice. It took me a minute to get that hint and exit because I was trying to figure out the identity of this alien cyborg and what the world did, did she do with my partner and good friend slash girl I really wanted to kiss named MJ. As soon as I grabbed my stuff and shut the door, she drove off just like that. I was ready to go against my mama for this girl, Martin. I don't know what happened. I thought things were going well. I swear since Manny called me out for not liking you, SJ and I have been tighter than ever. The chemistry was off the charts. I know I didn't read the signals wrong, did I? I have no idea what to do now. I can't eat. I can't barely sleep. Can't stay focused. Everywhere I turn, there's a reminder of this girl. Can't pass a brunette without doing a double take. Manny's been on this Carrie Underwood kick, which is what SJ liked to play in the background when we were working on debate stuff at her house. I even went to sleep at home not thinking about being around my mom would help. But when I got there, she was watching Judge Judy. SJ swears she and Judge Judy are related. I guess I should let it go, right? I can't force her to talk to me if she doesn't want to. It makes me feel whack as heck. But in my mind, I keep seeing the shrinking taillights of her car as she drove away. Whatever, I give up. Gonna try to sleep again now. Chapter 10. But Justice doesn't sleep. Not that night nor the rest of the week. And it's not just SJ. A couple of mornings after she gives him the cold shoulder, he and the rest of the nation learn that the Travis Jenkins... A 16-year-old black kid shot by the police while trying to help an older white woman in Alexis has died from his injuries. On Friday after school, Just walks into Doc's classroom wanting to talk about it, and he finds he's been beat to the punch. SJ's in there crying her eyes out. As much as he wants to turn on his heels and jet, he just can't seem to move. Seeing her there, even as a friend, broken the weight, is make Justice feel as helpless as he did the night he got arrested. Based on the way she's scowling at him, Just can't help but wonder if he's partially to blame for her tears. But how could he be? Didn't she turn her back on him? After they start, they stared each other down for forever, it feels. She wipes her face, grabs herself, and heads to the door. When Doc calls after her, she doesn't respond before breezing out. He turns to Justice. What's that all about? Oh, you don't know? Justice, ready to turn and leave himself. He drops himself into a desk instead. Doc crosses his arms and furls his elbows. Can't say I do, Justice. That's too bad, then, Justice says, looking at Doc right in the eye. I was hoping you would tell me.
Needless to say, Justice doesn't feel like talking anymore. As soon as he thinks enough time has passed for Esther to get off campus, he says goodbye to his supervised doc and heads to his dorm room. He just managed to doze up when there's a knock at his door, snatching him back into consciousness. Who is it? Open the door, fool. Manny just forces himself out of bed to the door. What, dog? He says, and he opens his Hey, bro, chill with the attitude. Manny pushes past him into the room, bringing his post-basketball practice B.O. with him. You sleeping or something? Obviously not if I'm standing here talking to you, your s booty. You need a shower. Shut up. It's Friday night. We got places to be. Put some clothes on and let's go. Just returns to the bed. Sorry, dog. I don't really feel like going anywhere tonight. That wasn't a request, Just. Don't think I haven't noticed how mopey you've been this week. Being alone in your current state isn't good for your mental health, man. Blake's party is tonight and you're coming with me. No, I'm not. All right, then. Manny pulls Just's desk chair over to the bed and sits down. You want to stay in bed? Cool. My dirty butt will be right here with you. Oh, come on, Manny. Get out of here with that. Just pulls a pillow over his nose. Manny kicks his shoes off and tucks his hand behind his head, unleashing the full force of his funk into the room. He smirks. Just really can't stand these guys sometimes. He takes a deep breath, which is a bad idea. Dang, you stink, dog. Fine, I'll go. Great. I'm going to go get my car from the lot. I'll meet you downstairs in 10. Yeah, all right. You won't regret it, man. Manny walks out and leaves the door. Justice really isn't in the best headspace to accepting a pregame beverage that gets shoved into his hand once he, they get there in Manny's basement. He'd never say it out loud, but Just would much rather be at SJ's watching National Geographic than here waiting for Manny to get ready. Just thinking about her is making him crazy. Before he knows it, his cup is empty and he's reaching for the flask Manny left on the ottoman. Dog, you crying? Manny says as he finally emerges from his room. Smelling like he bathed in Ar Armani code. Nah, bro, I'm good. Something in my eye. Manny sits down. All this about SJ? Huh? I heard what happened in the tournament. He can't be serious. What'd you hear? That you tried to kiss her and she cold-shouldered your butt? Just shakes his head. How could you possibly have heard that? Small school. People talk. Just doesn't respond. You were in love with her, huh? Heart's all broken and stuff. Whoa, dog. Slow down with all that. Just you're sitting here crying about. I'm not crying, Manny. Whatever, fool. Manny slouches down and stares at the ceiling. This gotta be love. For a minute, they sit in silence, Manny doing whatever he's doing it and just trying to keep his images of SJ out of his head. He switches gears to the next thing on his mind. You hear about Travonis Jenkins, the kid who got killed in, in Florida, right? Yeah, he died yesterday. Dang, that's sad. I keep thinking, that could have been me. What if the cop thought I had a gun? You didn't, though. Neither did Trav Travonis. That's exactly what I'm saying. Guy's walking down the street with his boys and stops to help a lady who ran out of gas on the wrong side of town. Cops get there and tell him to put his hands up because they think he's robbing her. And when he does, they open fire because they think his cell phone is a gun. The stuff's messed up, bruh, man. Just grabs a flask gun and takes a swig. Ends getting shot for carrying candy and cell phones and stuff. Can you imagine what would have happened to me if I had my cell phone out that night? I could be dead, dog. And for what? He swings in just to fill the berm. All right, that's enough. Manny takes the flashback and pats Just knee. Let's hit B's party. You obviously need a distraction. Part of Justice wants to shake Manny. Ask why he cares more about some stupid white boy party than he does about the unjust death of a guy who looks like him. Too bad he doesn't have it left in him. Yeah, all right, he says. Let's go. Perhaps if Justin hadn't drowned, downed half the liquor in Manny's refilled flask on the way back to Blake's house, the wooden lawn junkies with the black skin and the big lips standing guard at the bottom of Blake's porch... <sighs> wouldn't bother him as much. There's still a good chance that he'd slow down when Manny told him to. He wouldn't feel fury if he sees that guy behind the wall in the bar of Blake's basement is lined with posters from William H. West Big Ministral Jubilee. But Justice doesn't slow down. He keeps drinking until Manny literally took the flask from his hand, slipped it into the driver's side door where Justice could reach it. So when the birthday boy comes running up to Manny and Justice, Justice is ready to blow. Manny, happy birthday, man! Just, yeah, happy birthday. Bro, so glad you made it. Manny smiles and winces at Justin like, I told you. Yo, listen, Blake goes on. He's definitely been drinking. There's this fine A black girl here from Decatur Prep. And I was thinking you guys could wing me up for, for me and stuff. Homegirl's got the fattest booty I've ever seen. And I think if she meets my boys, she'll have a good chance of getting her upstairs. You feel me? And when I say boys, he said the N-word. He nudges Justin grins. Manny's smile collapses. He looks over at Justice, almost like he knows everything's about to go to hell. Is this fool serious right now, Justice? Blake's so confused. 
Just chill, Minnie says. Hell no, I'm not about to chill. Your boy's got racist lawn gnomes and white people and blackface hanging on the walls. Now he pulls that stuff and you want me to chill? Blake rolls his eyes. Dude, none of this crap is mine. My mom's great uncle is one of those performers. She hung up some posters. No big deal. You come in over here asking us to help you use a black man. Black girl is a big deal, Blake. That's not to mention you tossing the N-word around like you own it. Blake. You don't own it any more than I do. Nobody owns words. You think you know someone smart enough to get into Yale. Manny. All right, y'all. Let's calm down before this gets out of hand. It's already out of hand, Manny. Your boy Blake is a racist. What is it with you people and the, and the GD race card? We people. You realize Manny is one of, of us people too, right? Blake. Except Manny's got some sense and doesn't make everything about race. Why don't you loosen the heck up? Too bad you weren't allowed to say that when your cop who cuffed you for trying to get my girl. Ex-girl, you mean. Didn't she dump your butt? At this point, Jared and Tyler walk up, both with a red cup in their hands and a beer in the other. Homies, Jared says. It just makes justice matter. Just, man, I'm sick of y'all acting like you got, a, got leeway. Wow, dude, what crawled up your butt? Tyler laughs. Forget you, Jared. Whoa, now, Jared says. Blake, don't respect my bros at my party. Manny, just, let's just go. Just, points at Blake. Watch your back, dog. Blake, wait, are you threatening me? Jared laughs. Better watch out, B. You know Justice grew up in the hood. He's going to call up his gangster homies to ride your butt and bust some... By the time Justice is seeing, see, is seeing colors other than red, his left hand and right jaw are throbbing. But there's something warm running down his chin. Jared's scrambling up the floor with a split lip and a swelling eye and Blake is on his hands and knees with blood pouring out of his nose and onto the carpet. No pointed hood to stop the flow this time. There's a set of arms around Just, pinning his arm to his side. Let me go, he says, twisting out the grip of whoever's holding him. Manny, whose lip is bleeding too. Tyler seemed to be the only one who just got, un got away unscathed, but then Justice sees him shake, shake out his right hand. Of course, a crowd is gathered. Manny, what the hell is your problem, Justice? Man, don't even say nothing to me. Justice draws back. Excuse me? Don't say nothing to you? Just, you're just as bad as they are. What are you talking about? I don't know where you all, all this me against the world stuff is coming from, but you really need to check yourself. Just, these dudes disrespect you, disrespect us all the time, and you never say anything about it. You just go along with whatever they say. Manny, these are my friends, Just. You're just way too sensitive, man. Let me guess. That's what they say when they took offense at some racist joke, right? M man, bro, you tripping hard. You need to co go cool off or something. Just as shakes his hand, looks Manny over from head to toe. You know what, Manny? You're a sellout. Good luck at Morehouse next year. He shoves through the crowd and makes his way to the back door with people murmuring as he goes. Just before he pulls it open, he hears, Thanks for ruining my birthday, a-hole. Just as trudges up the hill, start walking in the direction he thinks will lead him out of Blake's mega mansion neighborhood. He's still drunk and can't see straight.